Okay, um, so uh, let's try this uh, ring forming reaction. Is this reaction on one of the quizzes or anything like that? It's just something you found in the book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's try this ring forming reaction. We'll do the mechanism for it. Okay, so notice what we've got here. We've got an aldehyde. Well, it's a bifunctional thing, right? You've got an aldehyde here and you've got the alcohol here. And what hopefully you see is that it's going to do this, you know, uh, cyclic ring formation. Well, it's going to react with itself. Um, and it's going to make what we call an acetal here. Okay? So, effectively what you're doing is masking this aldehyde as an acetal. Okay? So, uh, let's go ahead. Can I erase this one? Let's go ahead and do this. So, um, of course, the first thing, it's probably going to be a protonated ethanol that's going to protonate the thing because the ethanol is your solvent. So let's just start with the protonated ethanol, okay? Then you got the acid-base reaction, of course. I'm going to put my bone pairs there, and in fact, I like to do this too. Okay. So when I do that, I've got this structure, right? So remember, we've been calling this thing uh, like the super electrophile, right? So, and also recall that it's easier for yourself to hit you in the face than it would be for somebody else to, right? So if you take in mind both of those things, you should realize that the speed of the nucleophilic attack of this oxygen is going to be much more than that especially because you're making a one one two three four five six membered ring which is one of the quote unquote magic numbers in organic chemistry five and six okay so what's going to happen we're just going to take those electrons it's going to see that super electrophile and it's going to attack it like that. Okay. When we do that, we're making the six membered ring. Okay. So if you prefer, you can label your oxygen as six, right? So oxygen, five, four, three. Two, one. Okay? So, on atom six, there's still a proton. Like that. On atom five, there's nothing. Four, nothing. Three, nothing. Two, nothing. One, yes, there's something, right? Well, there's the OH group, the hydroxyl group that we've made. And there's the hydrogen still, okay? And of course there's the two hydrogens on all of those, but let's just kind of focus on that. And of course you're making a stereo center here, but we're not going to worry about it right now. Okay? In fact, you're making both an antimatter set. But this is an intermediate, so it's kind of cumbersome when you're trying to put all of the enantiomers of intermediates. Okay, so you've got... Remember, the protonated ethanol also is your catalyst for this reaction. So you're going to, in this case, reform the catalyst again, like that. Even though you're not done with the reaction yet. And now we've got the protonated ethanol again. Like that. Okay. 
And remember, if this thing gets protonated, then we just go backwards. So if the other one get protonated, then we can keep going forward. So get protonated like this. So notice, what do we have there? Very stable small molecules. So that's a good leaving group, right? <clears throat> but we also have alpha to that leaving group, uh, something that will kick it out of there. Remember, if something can kick it, it'll kick it, okay? So I think this is where, I mean, people like to make those things leave yeah. by themselves, you know? But if you've got a heteroatom alpha yeah, to it, sure. it'll always kick it out. So like that, like that, okay. and effectively that's the, the reaction that drives the thing forward because there's so little water relative to ethanol in there, so we can effectively put a forward arrow there if you want. And if you wanted to, I know you like to sometimes put minus H2 up, okay? I'll just put it over here somewhere, okay? So, so that's what we've made now, right, mm -hmm. like that. We still got that hydrogen on there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a pseudo aldehyde, right, protonated, kind of protonated type aldehyde. We've got water in there that we just created. But like we said, right, the amount of water is, is effectively nothing relative to the solvent, which is in this enormous concentration, right? So, it's a competition between effectively a billion to a one, even more than a billion to one. So, the billion is going to win out. So, it's going to see this super electrophile again. Attack it. Like that. Going to make that uh, stereo center again. I'm just going to put a little star on that stereo center that we've made. So let's just star this there. And in fact, let's go over here and star that. Because those are stereo centers too, right? Let's just star a ball. Okay. Um, this is not the product, right? Um, why? Because it's got that proton stuck on it. So you can imagine maybe the water molecule, but probably not another ethanol molecule. It's going to regenerate that catalyst. Or either way, transfer the proton to something that can transfer the proton again. Like that. And again, that's an uh, back and forth reaction, but of course you're going to isolate the product, the organic product. Why? Because you're going to do this in a separatory funnel, and it's going to be more soluble. Okay, so. So hopefully you can see we've got one carbon, so that's still a serious in it. So let's, I mean, let's Let's just say, show that we've got the same thing that we started off with, right? Or that we wanted to get. Like that. And then it said plus an antimer, right? Okay, so like that. So hopefully you can see we've got that stereo center there, of course. And that that is the acetal that you're looking for, right? So two oxygens with R groups attached to the same carbon is called a acetal. So this is essentially an acetal formation. And so R groups, do they have to be carbon? Um, well, I mean, yeah, let's, for you guys, yes, let's just say they have to be, have some sort of carbon associated with them, okay? 
Okay, so in this case, you went from this bifunctional thing that was aldehyde um, alcohol that reacted with itself to make the acetone. And in fact, you know, that's acetal formation anyways. You got an aldehyde or a ketone, right? And you react it with excess alcohol or whatever, okay? So we're cool, right? <laughs>